Adieu, farewell, earth's bliss. This world uncertain is. Fond are life's lustful joys. Death proves them all but toys. None from his darts can fly. I am sick. I must die. Lord, have mercy on us. Beauty is but a flower, which wrinkles will devour. Brightness falls from the air. Queens have died young and fair. Dust hath closed Helen's eye. I am sick. I must die. Lord, have mercy on us. England in Time of Pestilence by Thomas Nash Farewell, Earth's Bliss by D.G. Compton, 1966The name of Compton's novel not only comes from the poem, but also its ambiance does as well. The novel opens on a spaceship set for Mars. On it are 24 convicts turned colonists. Some of the crimes range from stealing to sedition to murder. Their sentence is to live out the rest of their lives on Mars. The ship is automated and it will remain on Mars. It is a one-way trip. The colonists are drugged for the trip. It is in their food. In this way, they survive in a small ship for weeks and weeks. The characters are unknown to each other. They are given biblical names to replace their real names. Compton is known for his complex characters, and that's no different here in this early novel. We have Jacob, a black man, throughout this novel seeking companionship and friendship but he's put into a society primarily of white people. Among the colonists, there is racism and homophobia. Will Jacob find his way in the new community of convicts turned colonists? Ruth is a school teacher charged with sedition. She is guilty of teaching children to think for themselves. Will she be able to survive in a rigid community on Mars? And then there is Simon, a tough, slick criminal who's guilty of murdering a black man. There are more characters on the ship and on Mars that are developed by Compton. The ship lands some miles away from the town. They are instructed to stay with the ship until the townspeople show up. The assistant governor and some men come and welcome them. They take stock of their supplies and start to unload them. They start taking them back to town. They tell the colonists to just stay with the ship and they'll be back in the morning to get them. But in the morning, there is a sandstorm that lasts 38 days. With little food and no way to get to the town, it is a matter of survival. After the sandstorm passes, the surviving members are brought to town and nursed to health. This is a rough and bleak world. There is no contact with Earth, the only supplies they have is by cannibalizing ships as they come to Mars. And they come to Mars only about once an Earth year. In Mars' summer, they can grow lichen. There are some small creatures that they call Martian rabbits that they eat as well. It is a rough and hard scrabble life. The community reminds me of some small communities in the Old West in the United States. You have a doctor, a preacher, a governor and his assistant. They keep the law and order of the town. They reuse and repurpose spaceships for their dwellings. There is no contact with Earth. The only people on Mars are the convicts slash colonists. The social, political, and psychological makeup of this settlement is based on the church and the structure provided by the governor. While there are racist characters, it is an integrated community. Homosexuals are not tolerated. Anyone not following the community's rules and mores is forced to take the cold way out. And the cold way out is an execution of sorts. It is being out on Mars' surface for night. Whether you have a suit or not, you will not survive. This is not a plot-driven novel. It is about a society and characters in a razor-thin survival situation this novel follows these characters through half a Martian year or a full Earth year. 
it ends with a new ship of convicts arriving. As with other Compton work, we see him throw a variety of characters into very stressful situations. It obviously brings back moments in history when people have been exiled. But this is the cruelest exile of all. There is no hope of returning to Earth. Live or die. Let's take a look at the cover art for some of the printings of Farewell, Earth's Bliss. The Ace Edition shows the spaceship now on Mars. There is a woman with a spacesuit in the foreground, but it's fading away as we get nearer to her feet. Is she losing who she is? I think of this as the character Ruth from the novel. The Ace cover design is by Carol Thole. In this tandem edition, we see Mars as a ball and chain on a spaceman's foot. This is a great thematic cover. The tandem cover art is by Chris Archelaos. In the first print hardcover from Hodder and Stoughton, we see a dead person in the foreground with some colonists in spacesuits in the background. This portrays the bleak survival theme of the novel. The wraparound cover design is by Reginald Lloyd. Compton's prose is clean and precise. We learn much from the internal thoughts of the characters. While there is an intriguing concept here, this is not an adventure novel. I believe this is the fourth Compton novel I've read. They all have a science fiction premise, but they are character driven. One thing I will say for the plot, I didn't see the ending coming. Compton is a unique voice in science fiction. He creates disturbing backgrounds with flawed characters. His plots aren't uplifting, but they are insightful. I do appreciate the bleak melancholy of his writing. I give this difficult view of colonists on Mars 7.5 out of 10. Have you read Farewell, Earth's Bliss? Do you prefer plot-driven or character-driven novels? Obviously, the best is when they come together. Are you willing to read dark and bleak novels? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.